Hey, uh, we've been talking lately about how uh, in, in the past year, a lot of people have been interested in handcraft. Uh, the, the interest has kind of risen, I think, a lot of times with uh, with people staying home and locked down and that kind of stuff. They've thought, you know, here I am working from home, trying to figure out uh, how to spend some of my free time. I don't have my commute anymore, <laughs> you know, and they're saying, uh, you know, what can I do to, to learn to fill up this time? And also, uh, even after this is all over now, uh, for you know, being able to work at home, a lot of people now are doing their job from their house, and so they're finding this freedom to be able to yeah. tackle more handcraft. So uh, we've been talking about that and what's so unique about that situation. Yeah, and we've been getting a very simple question uh, often, and the question is, how can I learn woodworking? What's the best way to learn how to use hand tools? Yeah, so we've been uh, talking about, you know, what can we do to help? What is the kind of thing that we can do from our little spot in Maine? We've taught in-person classes before, but that's only a few people a year, right. you know? So how can we help all these people who are trying to get connected, trying to learn how to, how does this tool actually work? How do you do that? Right. Um, and how do we reach that and, and connect those dots for people? Yeah, because there are two common ways that people today learn woodworking. Um, there's the media route. So I would say specifically YouTube, right? We go to YouTube, we find information there. Uh, there are other places online that you can learn, uh, but also then books, right? And so, you know, that that is another form of media that people have for many years found uh, as useful reference material for learning how to and do And we like working. books. We love books. <laughs> um, but then the other one is in-person classes, right. you know, where you save up uh, in, in some instances, quite a bit of money, and you go and you travel to someone else's shop or space, you spend a few days or a week there learning some specific skill or doing some specific build. Um, and so, you know, both of those have pros and cons, but those are the primary ways that people learn. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can see what it's like when you, you uh, I'm sure you can relate to, you walk into YouTube, try to search for something, you look something up and you say, uh, how to cut a mortise and tenon joint, right? Yeah. And there's this sea of response, all these videos from all over the place with, it just can be overwhelming where you're trying to weed through all this. But, you know, the thing that I found is that it's, it is quite useful, that you actually is super clear. Uh, you can go back and replay the clip. You can, you know, look at every little aspect of this crystal clear lens to show close how that works. Uh, you can't get that in every context, but videos are really good yeah, at that. Yeah, where you can zoom right in. Another area that is kind of a downside to that is you don't know if you're getting good instruction. Right. Um, there are so many people out on YouTube telling you how to do things, and some of the advice is not so good. Uh, so it's hard to know who to trust on there. Sure. Well, but then so you don't know who to trust. But then I guess in my experience, you can look, you can watch a technique and say, okay, that's how I'm supposed to execute that given task. And then you get to your bench and you try it and it just doesn't work the same yeah. way. And you think either this is not right or I'm not holding it right or right. I just can't troubleshoot this. I don't know what's going wrong. And so you don't have a mentor. You don't have anyone there like you have with an in-person class. You don't have someone there to say, oh, well, you're holding it wrong. Or yeah. you think that's sharp? No, no, that's not sharp. Let me show you sharp. Yeah, and that's that, one, that of the, of thing. one of the biggest benefits of in-person advice is you can be struggling with something at home. You come into a shop with an instructor and they say, oh, just change that. And all of a sudden you get it. I mean, yeah. it's immediate because the experienced instructor can pick out those areas that you're your form, your technique, the way you're holding the tool just needs a little tweak. And then it, it's like, Eureka, I've yeah. gotten it. Yeah. So you have this in-person <clears throat> opportunity and we've, you know, I've taught those kinds of classes and I've had people fly in from all over the place to, to come take that class. And uh, I think what's, what's special about that is that opportunity to be able to show someone right in person, here's what you're doing wrong. Um, but that's not all that's not the full picture because as yeah. you know it's like it's it can wicked be, expensive if you're considering like let's just consider your travel costs your lodging your food uh sometimes you know it's time off work yeah um and then the cost of the class itself which can be you know twelve hundred dollars for a week-long course yeah that's quite an investment for one week of a limited number of slots so every class of course is capped at something six students eight students um and so 
That is that that puts definite limits on how effective that teaching method can be. Well, we found that when we did our workshop, we had six slots, and we got way way more interest than we could fill. And we yeah. just sent, can't in our schedule fill up that many classes, right? Um, and that's just kind of the thing. It's like this feeding frenzy mentality that as soon as uh, a new class is launched and you know people kind of bite on it and you don't have the opportunity to do that slot. And it's this it's this, you know, big rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can save up lots of money, use all your vacation time, go out and do the one big class, the dream class. Yeah. And then what? Yeah, and, and then you, you go, go home. home. And yeah, and then you know some aspects of the instruction in that kind of class are you're usually you're you're watching over the instructor's shoulder. You get a brief demonstration, and then your bench time, which is all good, but it's it's super concentrated. And then to take that concentrated instruction in someone else's shop, often using someone else's tools, then to bring it home to your shop and your tools, yeah. it it doesn't always lend to a, a smooth transition back into regular craft practice in your own shop. Yeah, yeah. So we've been working on a way to try to figure that out, to try to bridge that gap, um, to try to uh, make make those, help those people do that. Um, and it's, it's things like, so you have this, you know, you have the wooden plane, right? And we are big fans of wooden planes. Um, but I think a lot of people would pick this up and say, you know, all right, well, what... Where's the knob? Where's the where's the lock? How do you how do you secure it? And so it can seem sort of opaque or sort of hidden that the, the mechanism there is hidden. But things like you know just having someone to show you, okay, you can have this and zoom in up close, and it's like you can show the technique, but the subtlety of learning how much is too much. Or okay, so you can hear it and you can see the difference. Um, and to have someone to be able to watch a video to do that is one thing. And then as you try it and struggle to have someone show you, okay, so you, what you want to do is you want to feel on the bottom and slide that forward and then tap like that. And this is what you're feeling for. And here's the test. To be able to walk through all those things uh, with somebody overseeing and kind of um, – you know, available to say, hey, this is what I keep doing. Why isn't this working? Yeah. Uh, that's just, I think, videos can't do that. Yeah, and that offers what... the best of both worlds, the, yeah. the world of media instruction and then the world of in-person instruction. And so we have been working and putting our heads together to figure out a way to combine those. And uh, we're going to be talking in an, uh, a video that we have coming out soon about things like the value of mentorship yeah. in teaching and learning woodworking. And also um, something we alluded to is just this idea of, of weaving craft into your everyday life, making it a regular habit, a regular practice, right. uh, which is really important if you wanna grow in skill. You can't just make it you know, your, your once a year mountaintop experience going to a woodworking class and then you come home and, and it's gonna, like, hardly just... ever go anywhere with it. <laughs> yeah, you got to right. keep keep growing, and so there are there are ways to incorporate regular craft practice into everyday life. So we're gonna talk more about that in an upcoming video. Yeah. So let us know. Let us know uh, in the comments below uh, how you have dealt with this struggle. You know, if mm -hmm. you have this interest to learn handcraft, and here you are. Maybe maybe in your situation you're still in isolation or something, and you're trying to figure out. How can I connect the dots? I can read books and watch videos, but I need someone to guide me through it. Um, how have you navigated through that? Um, and, and have you felt the same thing? And actually, the other thing I'm curious, you know, when I've interacted with the students I've taught with in-person classes, I'm curious to hear feedback after the fact. Like, were you able to take this home when you went home? Could you then, you know, apply that knowledge to the next project? Um, were you able to make it a regular practice in your life and weave it in? You know, how did this go? Or was it sort of a mountaintop experience? And then you went home and you're waiting for next year. Right. You're <laughs> you know? starting to save up again. Yeah. So, yeah, let us know in the comments uh, your experience with this kind of thing. We are curious to hear. Mm-hmm.